One of the historic bright spots out of Tuesday's election is the fact for the first time in American's history, someone who's openly transgender will be a member of Congress. And young to boot, 34-year-old Sarah McBride, who previously served two terms as a state senator in Delaware, won her seat with almost 60% of the vote. This is on the heels of the Republican Party leaning into the demonization of trans folks and spending hundreds of millions of dollars on anti-transgender ads this election cycle. Joining me now, the newly elected representative from Delaware, Sarah McBride. Great to have you here. Thanks for having me. Congratulations. How, um, I imagine, what a strange election night it must have been for you. It's, uh, it was an evening of a lot of mixed emotions, but I am so incredibly grateful to Delaware, the state that helped raise me and shape me into the person that I am for giving me this opportunity to serve and incredibly determined as I head down to D.C. to defend Delaware and defend our democracy. Your state, obviously, it's a, it's a Democratic state, it's a blue state, but the, you have the at-large seat, right? Yes. For, so you, you're, you're like a senator, you represent the whole state. Um, and I got to imagine, this is it, it, there's people with all sorts of different kinds of politics across the political spectrum, all kinds of different views. What, what, was, your, what was your experience running that campaign? Well, first off, I, I think this victory is a testament to Delawareans that in our state of neighbors, we are fair-minded, that we judge candidates based on their ideas and not their identities. And I think voters across the state of Delaware, Democrats, independents, and Republicans alike, responded to our message of building a government that respects all of us, that respects all of us across all of our different backgrounds, and of course, across all of our different beliefs. And I think folks responded to the fact that during my time in the Delaware State Senate, I was really singularly focused on bringing down costs facing workers, their families, mm. and retirees. I helped pass paid family and medical leave. I helped secure the largest investment in our state's Medicaid program since the Affordable Care Act passed. And I was able to do all of that with bipartisan support. And we put forward a positive, inclusive message during the course of this year and a half long campaign. And I, I think voters really responded to that. I want to play, uh, if we got like one, one of your uh, campaign ads, um, uh, just to folks get a sense, uh, texture of the campaign. Take a listen. In Washington, they talk, but in Delaware, Sarah delivers. Sarah McBride helped raise the minimum wage. She got paid leave for workers. She got Democrats and Republicans to work together. We're all in for Sarah. Carpenters. Bus drivers. Nurses. She metal workers. Sarah sees us. And she respects us. That's a damn good ad, man. That's, I mean, that is, uh, that's, that's focused in all the right places, I think. Um, and and it, it, it seemed to work. It, it, it did because it really reflected, one, the diverse coalition that we built across the state of Delaware during the course of this campaign. And it really focused on the issues that I was hearing from Delawareans across the state. I was not hearing about these anti-trans attacks. I was hearing about the cost of child care, the cost of housing, the cost of health care. It's funny. Politics is a lot more about listening than people realize. <laughs> like when you're, you, 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 you know, especially in a small state like the state that Joe Biden got his political start in, where you can actually talk to a, a shockingly high percentage yeah. of, of people in a state, you know, that size, small geographical footprint. Um, you really do a lot of, it's just a lot, it's a lot of listening, I imagine. It's, it's retail politics yeah. at its best. I talk about the power of proximity. And I think in a state as small as Delaware, we are able to see our fellow citizens as neighbors, not as enemies. Yeah. And we're able to move past a lot of the toxicity in our national politics. Just today, actually, I was in southern Delaware, uh, one of the, the red county in our state, Sussex County, for what's called Return Day, where Democratic and Republican candidates come together to literally bury a ceremonial hatchet to mark the end of the election season. And it, wow. it's that type. It's an old tradition. It's an old tradition, but it, it really reflects oh. our approach to politics in Delaware and the fact that we recognize that a different kind of politics is possible. You're going to go to a different place with a very different politics. Um, and you're going to be there as, a, as genuinely as a pioneer, um, which is a remarkable thing. Uh, and also in an atmosphere where I got to say, like, I got trans folks in my life that I, I love dearly and want to, like, stand in solidarity with them. And it, I myself is like a person who's not on the, you know, who's just a cis white straight dude. I was like upset and ticked off and viscerally just really wound up every one time I saw one of those GD ads. <laughs> and how, how did you feel and how do you feel like trans folks are feeling right now? Well, 
I think folks across this country right now are scared. I think folks across this country are facing a crisis of hope. And I think those ads were part of a, of a long-term strategy by the far right wing in this country, which is a strategy to pick a, a small and vulnerable misunderstood community to fear monger and scapegoat around in order to distract and divide from the fact that those far right wing politicians have absolutely no policy solutions for the issues that are actually keeping people up at night. My favorite part of this uh, on, on the old one, too, is after they ran $100, $150 million in those ads. Today, it's about the today. The headlines are uh, CEOs and folks on Wall Street meeting with the incoming president for like the deregulatory tax cut agenda. It's like exactly, exactly like those are what you run the ads on. And that's the agenda on day one. What we know are democratic policies are popular. People want paid family and medical leave. They want affordable child care and housing. They want accessible and affordable health care. And these ads were were an attempt to distract from the fact that Donald Trump's going to implement 20 percent sales tax on American workers, that he's going to cut regulations that put workers at risk. He's going to decrease taxes on the wealthiest in our country and continue to slash critical benefits that Americans rely on. And look, you know, these these ads um, I think we obviously are going to have a long conversation about why this election turned out the way it did. But I think as you were talking about earlier in the program, this is not a good time to be a party in power across right. practically every liberal democracy across around the world. And these ads were, I think, a, a, a separate issue entirely. When I was hearing from undecided voters, when I was talking to them, was they felt like the economy was better under Donald Trump and that we survived four years. And obviously, I disagree with that perspective, but that seemed that to be driving, driving people. Congresswoman-elect Sarah McBride is going to be going for new member orientation soon. That's right. That's right. It's really a pleasure. Thanks for coming up. Thanks so really much. Really appreciate it.